Hey guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rise. We're back here at Jaguar Land Rover St. Pete. And guess what? I hope you have your candles ready, your party favors, and your party hat, because guess what? The party is over with this vehicle. This is it. This is a 2024 Jaguar F-Type. This particular one is an R75. But before we get into this special edition of this iconic British brand, let's talk about what's going on here. Jaguar, they are set to make big changes for model year 2025. Their lineup is going full electrification. So what they wanted to do is they wanted to kind of commemorate and celebrate the past 75 years of Jaguar performance when it comes to the internal combustion engine. And it's amazing because it goes back to 1948. 1948 when they came out with the Jaguar XK120, that was the fastest production vehicle of the time. It had a top speed of over 126 miles per hour, which today's standards may not sound very fast, but back in 1948, that truly was moving. Now, over the years, many iconic Jags from the classic E-Type, the D-Type that won the 24 Hours Le Mans, and then, of course, I remember growing up in the 80s, the IMSA GTP cars, spilling over into the early 90s, and then having that sports car tradition continue with the F-Type. Now, what's fascinating is, is that this car, I really feel is one of the most underrated performance cars ever. But what I wanna do is, I wanna dive into this 2024 edition known as the F-Type R75. I wanna find out, is it worth getting one of these? Is it gonna be one of those cars in the future that you kind of scratch your head and say, I wish I would have got one? And do they deserve the bad rap that they get when it comes to things like reliability? So let's go ahead, let's find out what's unique about this R75 and see, is it worth buying at this price? Let's go ahead and find out. Right off the bat, the sunshine comes out and we have that iconic color. What is it? British Racing Green. Now I do realize that Jaguar, just like Land Rover and Range Rover, are owned by the Tata Corporation. That is a business, a, co a corporation based out of India. These are still built in England and Jaguar's headquarters are still in England. So this is still a British sports car. Now at the front, you'll see the end, this is it the end of the front end of an F-Type. So we have those J-style daytime running lamps, your LED multi-beam headlights, super slim, and then working your way down, you'll notice that you have a little bit of gloss black, but then we have functional corner air scoops and corner air curtains. Now, one of the things that I like about this R75 is that a lot of the things that are normally silver on this car have been blacked out. So I'm digging the little bit amount of gloss black, but what I like even more is I, you'll notice on the splitter, it's British racing green. So this green has more sparkle to it than your grandfather's balls, his bowling balls that he goes every Friday night down to the local bowling alley and wins trophies with his friends. This has more metal flake than those bowling balls. And I'm glad that they painted the splitter the same body color. Now, as we come across the low front nose of this cat, you'll see our flat black grill, our Jaguar badge, and for this special edition, it's blacked out. We slide over to the side, same story. Everything is blacked out except for that shiny R, and I'm glad that they kept the perimeter of the grill opening silver with the F-Type name stamped in there. But the changes are very subtle for the R75, and I kind of like that. I don't think Jaguar, especially the F-Type, is one of those cars where it's like in your face. It's more about the subtle changes for the people who could appreciate it. But definitely, probably one of the most timeless designs in all of the auto industry. And remember, it was the E-Type, which is basically the grandfather of this vehicle, which is the F-Type. It was the E-Type when it came out in the mid-1960s that made Enzo Ferrari himself say, that is the most beautiful car he's ever seen. Now, as we rise up, you'll notice slight rise in the upper nose area, and then it gets a little bit prominent, more prominent as you get into the hood. 
Instead of these being black, they made it British Racing Green with the flat black functionality for those heat extractors. And remember, we got that reverse opening clamshell hood. Now, in a day and age where a lot of sports cars are becoming mid-engine, it's nice to still see a front engine car, that nice long nose, and I'm telling you right now, I would love to wash this thing because the curves are just absolutely fantastic on it. Now, when we come around the bend, we do have unique wheels and tires. So you're gonna get this multi-spoke, gloss black, machine aluminum. They actually blacked out the Jaguar badge. Normally this is red. They blacked it out with that screaming cat there. And then you'll see the enlarged calipers with the ja Jaguar name. Normally these are red. These are flat black. I wish that they would use, I'm actually gonna zonk these even though they're ginormous. I am gonna zonk them because I wish that they use Brembo products with it being a true performance car. Now this is a 20 inch wheel. Tires are Pirelli P0 summer tires. 265 on the width up front, 35 series sidewall. And don't forget, this is all wheel drive. So if you're looking at a Z06, if you're looking at a lot of other competitors, maybe a 911, this has all wheel drive and a supercharged V8 underneath the hood. Can't wait to go on throttle with you. Now coming down the side, a little bit more aluminum. You got the Leaping Jaguar. That's what they call that classic Jag badge is the Leaping Jag. And then what's kind of weird is they put this classy kind of silhouette badge down here. That's part of the R75 anniversary package. Why didn't they put that higher? I don't know why you would put it down here, something so subtle. But that's how Jaguar does it. They're about subtle. Now, as we rise up, you do have more of that flashy uh, British racing green. I got some weird dirt on my, my hands. Gross. LED turn signals. You do have bright, shiny metalwork top and bottom. Now, the reason why I like this is that I feel like it gives it a classy look. And I think that's the whole thing about this, this car is that it's so timeless that it's classy. So I'm actually digging the bright, shiny metalwork around the window openings. I love that side skirt extension as it flares out towards the rear wheels and tires. And then these door handles do go flush. So they don't always stick out. They do go flush when you're driving down the road. You got a full glass roof, everything blacked out. So that looks really slick. And then let's take a look at what we got out back. So we have those P zeros, once again, 20 inch wheel, 305. So even though this is all wheel drive, it's rear wheel drive base and then it sends power to the front when needed. So that's gonna give you that awesome zero to 60 from a dead stop. But the way everything has a nice curve and that's what I love. My, one of my favorite parts besides the hood is I love this voluptuous rear fender. It just extends out nicely. Mmm, I love a good rear end, and this Jaguar definitely has it. You'll notice that we have the leaping Jag on the rear hatch with the Jaguar name there. Love that badge. This is an active aero piece, so this actually raises and lowers based off the speed, and this is a full hatchback. So the whole hatch actually lifts up, and it is electric, which is nice. I'm not gonna show you the inside. We've already talked about that in other reviews. I just wanted to show you that nice electric assist and you have some usable space in there, which is great. Same thing with the headlights. Look at the LED taillights. So elegant, but purposeful. And then as we work our way down, I love this rear diffuser, quad tip exhaust, and they're staggered. So one sticks out further than the other, stainless steel tips. And then look at the diffuser. This is something off of an IMSA GTP race car. I mean, it looks, freaking sick. Of course, we got the R badge, which is normally red. They blacked it out. It's actually black and gray instead of the red and, uh, and green. So it's nice to have that different touch for the 75, the R75. But boy, it's one of those shapes that I could stare at all day long. But why don't we go ahead? We don't have all day. Let's pop the hood and take a look at the heart of this Jag. All right, guys, time to take a peeksie underneath the hood. Like I said, that reverse clam op clamshell opening hood, just like the original E-Type. What you'll see is a lot of plastic, and it's a damn shame because the top of that super, supercharger is freaking sexy. But underneath the plastic, what do we got? That's a five liter supercharged V8. And when we talk about power, we have gobs. 575 horsepower, 516 pound-feet of torque. It's made it to a ZF eight-speed automatic transmission, zero to 60 in about 3.3 seconds. It does weigh 3,900 pounds, MPGs, 16 in the city, and 24 
on the highway. So nice to still have that V8 rumble, but like I said, get your party makers out, your noise makers, because this is the last time that a Jaguar F-Type will be making any noise because it's going towards electrification. So why don't we celebrate the right way? If you're ready, I'm ready. Let's fire up this cat and hear its roar. All right, guys, we are inside this 2024 Jaguar F-Type R75. I know you're saying to yourself, Joe, it's, it's growing on me. You're right. It's a timeless design. I really want to be unique. How much is it? So the way that this one is optioned has an MSRP of $120,000. Let's see how it stacks up for the price to the door panels. I love the two-tone leather. You got that nice light tan light brown style with the white contrast stitching love the way they did all that intricate design in the center there you have the meridian premium sound system and then you have your power seat controls the same place like you would find some other luxury brands you do have three sets of memory settings for your passengers and then the door pocket is large enough easily for five scones so get a blueberry a cranberry orange maybe a cherry and then maybe a chocolate. Or whatever you wanna get, you could get it and put it in that door pocket. Now going from the door panel to the dash, same thing, the materials. I know the Z06 Corvette has nice materials, I'm not saying that, but this is pretty damn nice. The way they got the stitching, the Alcantara everywhere, come on in, here's your 75 badge. I wish they would have done something just a little bit more for Pete's sakes. Just this, that's it. But we do have the AC, uh, vents that lift and raise when you fire the vehicle up or when you shut the AC on or off, those go up and down. You have your infotainment system, 10 inch, 10.25 to be exact. Backup camera, super clear resolution. And then you got your nice large AC controls, dual climate, toggle switches for the AC. You do have your start stop button. This is gonna control your eight speed automatic. We can make the exhaust nice and loud put it in the sport mode or what they call our dynamic mode. There is a little bit of gloss black, but you really shouldn't be touching that. But look at the two-tone, it's the touches. You got a nice oak crap panel for your passenger. I do like the flat black here. This is nice and simple and clean. Two cup holders, close that up, lift this up. You got enough room in there for the family jewels and you're not gonna scratch your family jewels, so that's good. Two USB-A's, a 12 volt, and then the seats. The one piece backs, look how thin they are. Super thin, nice stitching, bolstering is spot on the money, full power assist for the passenger and for the driver. And then you do have this ginormous glass roof. It doesn't open up, but what is nice is that you have a shade for it. So you can keep the sun out or you can let the sun shine in on you and you're surrounded by this soft Alcantara material that's as soft as your girlfriend's pussycat really that soft. But why don't you come over to the business end of this cat? I want to show you behind the leather wheel of this Jag. All right, guys, ding-a-ling-a-ding-dong. This door won't stop dinging, but we're going to keep on going. Nice aluminum sill plate. The Jaguar name lights up all LED. Nice size pedal box, aluminum brake pedal, throttle. I just would like an aluminum dead pedal. The dead pedal is just carpet. That to me is not a luxurious touch. The seats though feel Phenomenal with a capital PH. You don't spell phenomenal with an F, kids. It's PH. <laughs> but they feel great. Feel is with an F. Phenomenal is a PH. I'm six feet tall. I got plenty of headroom in here. The ding dong and stop. So come on in, Steven. Show them the nice leather steering wheel. Two different types of leather, perforated and smooth. You got your solid stripe up top. There's our R badge, R75, all blacked out. You do have paddles to go up and down that eight speed automatic. And it is an electronic tilting and telescoping steering wheel. And then of course you have that nice large digital gauge cluster 
with the Jag there staring at you, you can see when you go into your different modes, how it changes. We're gonna keep it in dynamic mode because that's about the performance. The one thing that's really missing in here for the price, where's the head up display? There isn't one. And that to me is a big zonk. But you know what? I'm not showing you the cargo area. We already opened it. If you really wanna know what you could put in there, come down and uh, open it up and take a look. Or you can look at one of my other Jaguar F-Type reviews where we did open it up. But what I wanna do is I wanna open something up. I wanna open up the throttle and go for a spin in this Jag. All right, guys, we're inside this 2024 Jaguar F-Type R75. I have it in dynamic mode and we're gonna be shifting with the paddles through that eight speed, that ZF eight speed automatic transmission if you're ready, I'm ready for some British sports car all-wheel drive. Supercharge on throttle. Here we go. On throttle, yeah! <laughs> yeah! Mm. Nice shift from that ZF8 speed and the sound out the back of the car is pure bliss and what's awesome is nothing's being pumped in through the speakers no synthetic sound the seat doesn't vibrate to make it feel like i'm going fast that's what this car brings and i just love how connected i feel to it now it is a little softer than some of the other sports cars out there and what i mean by that softer is just a little bit more body roll but with the adaptive suspension, it does a really, really good job of helping to give you that confidence in the twisties, but also when you're going down the straight and narrow, you feel good as well. But the all-wheel drive is fan-freaking-tastic. Oh, here we go, that's second gear. Mm. It sounds like a freaking World War II battleship firing off its cannons. Every time you shift, you're getting these nice pops, bit. excuse me, I'm, I'm getting all choked up. Pops and bangs and everything else. Seating position is fantastic. I love the way the seats have just enough bolstering to make things interesting, but they are comfy. I wish the bottom portion of the seat had a little bit more bolstering, believe it or not. But the way everything is oriented in here feels great. The materials are second to none. The leather, the stitching, I love the digital gauge cluster. All of that looks fantastic. And then of course you have that all wheel drive supremacy, which makes life so fantastic when you're on throttle. All right guys, we gotta go on throttle from a dead stop again. Are you ready? Cause I'm ready. On throttle, here we go. Nice. the line really well the shifts are very quick both up and down through the gearbox look at this oh yeah oh yeah Woo! look at this <laughs> I tell you, it's a ton of fun. The things that I'm seeing that I would like to have corrected, I wish there was a little bit more weight in the steering. It actually steers too quick because the steering is too light without giving enough communication. And I would just like a little less body roll, just a little less body roll side to side. The weight transfer on the brakes and on throttle is actually very pleasant. Feels really secure. Hey right, guys, one more time for you. Definitely one more time for me. Supercharge V8, here we go. On throttle, here we go. Yeah! Look at this, look at this. Like taking candy from a baby. shifts very very purposeful 
smooth and keep the chassis stable. My, my, my. Where is it? Wow. I'm telling you right now, you can say what you want about this Jag. Talk about it's not reliable, this, that, and everything else. But uh, such a unique driving experience. Such a fun driving experience. And a car that I could just stare at for days. But we gotta get back to Jaguar Land Rover St. Pete and wrap this one up. So I'll see you in a split second. Right, guys, it's been one of those tea sipping, scone eating, on throttle kind of days. I definitely gotta thank Miro and the rest of the team here at Jaguar Land Rover St. Pete for allowing me access to this R75 version of the F-Type. Let me know what you think. Is it worth the price? Are you afraid about the reliability or are you just gonna go get a Z06? Let me know down in that comment section, but if you're new to the channel, on your way out, hit that subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile. Come back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Raise Rides family. We gotta thank Stephen Flood, Stephen Flood Photography. We appreciate his hard work. Check him out on Instagram. He takes photos and stuff, so definitely check him out. Thank you, Stephen, for all that you do. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.